High above commercial air traffic, an unusual aircraft has quietly operated for decades. It flies higher than most jets and stays aloft far longer than expected. Its missions are rarely discussed and often misunderstood. Only a handful were ever built. Even fewer still fly today. This aircraft was never designed for combat or speed records. Instead, it became a platform for extreme altitude science and intelligence gathering. Governments and scientists relied on it when satellites were unavailable or insufficient. Its longevity defies normal military aircraft lifespans. That aircraft is the Martin Slash General Dynamics RB-57F Canberra. The aircraft that would become the RB-57F began its life as the British Canberra bomber. The United States adopted the design in the early Cold War period. American planners saw potential beyond conventional bombing. Reconnaissance quickly became the primary interest. The airframe offered altitude capability few aircraft could match. Martin Aircraft produced the American-built versions under license. These early RB-57 variants were already modified for surveillance roles. Cameras and sensors replaced most bombing equipment. High-altitude performance was steadily improved. Intelligence demands continued to grow throughout the 1950s. By the late 1950s, existing reconnaissance aircraft were reaching their limits. Missile testing and nuclear programs required higher-altitude observation. Satellites were still experimental and unreliable. Aircraft remained essential for verification missions. A more capable platform was urgently needed. The RB-57F program was approved as a major redesign. Rather than a new aircraft, engineers chose deep modification. Weight reduction became a primary goal. Almost every structural component was reviewed. The result would barely resemble earlier Canberra's. Wing design was radically altered to increase lift. Wings were extended to extreme span for thin air flight. Structural reinforcement was carefully minimized. Engineers balanced strength against weight constantly. These changes defined the aircraft's unique appearance. Production was intentionally limited from the beginning. Only 21 RB 57F aircraft were built. Each aircraft was expensive and highly specialized. The mission profile did not require large fleets. Quality and capability mattered more than numbers. The RB-57F was built specifically for extreme altitude operations. Its long wings allowed efficient flight in very thin air. Control surfaces were optimized for stability rather than agility. The aircraft was not designed for combat maneuvering. Everything focused on sustained high-altitude flight. Power came from Pratt and Whitney TF-33 turbofan engines. To assist high-altitude performance, J-60 turbojets were added in the wings. These provided extra thrust during climb and cruise. The mixed propulsion system was complex and maintenance-intensive. Few aircraft ever used a similar configuration. Speed was a secondary consideration in the design. Endurance and altitude mattered far more than raw velocity. Pilots described handling as demanding, especially during takeoff and landing. Small errors could become serious quickly. Training and discipline were essential. Payload flexibility was one of the aircraft's strengths. Sensor packages could be changed between missions. Cameras, atmospheric samplers, and electronic equipment were commonly carried. This modular approach increased usefulness. One aircraft could support many mission types. Cockpit systems were designed for long-duration missions. Pressurization was critical at extreme altitude. Pilots often wore partial pressure suits. Fatigue management became a serious concern. Flights required careful physiological planning. Range and loiter time exceeded expectations. The RB-57F could remain on station for extended periods. This capability was impossible for early satellites. Missions could be adjusted in real time. 
flexibility gave the aircraft lasting value. The RB-57F entered service during a period of intense Cold War tension. Its primary role was high-altitude strategic reconnaissance. The aircraft operated where most interceptors could not reach. Altitude was its main form of protection. Missions focused on intelligence rather than confrontation. One of its most important tasks was monitoring nuclear activity. The aircraft collected atmospheric samples after nuclear tests. This data helped verify compliance with test ban treaties. Few platforms were capable of this type of mission. The RB-57F became a critical verification tool. Missile testing surveillance was another major assignment. The aircraft observed ballistic missile launches and reentry tests. Optical and electronic sensors recorded vital performance data. These missions supported intelligence assessments of foreign capabilities. Accuracy and reliability were essential. Electronic intelligence collection was also conducted. The RB-57F monitored radar emissions and communication signals. Flights were carefully planned to avoid escalation. The aircraft often operated near sensitive regions. Political consequences were always considered. Unlike faster reconnaissance aircraft, the RB-57F relied on endurance could remain at altitude for extended periods. This allowed long observation windows. Satellites could not yet provide comparable coverage. Flexibility made the aircraft valuable. Operations were highly classified during this period. Crews rarely knew full mission details. Aircraft markings were often minimal. Public awareness of the program was extremely limited. Secrecy protected both missions and personnel. As reconnaissance satellites improved, some roles began to shift. However, aircraft-based intelligence remained important. Weather, timing, and responsiveness favored aircraft. The RB-57F continued flying critical missions. Its usefulness extended well beyond initial expectations. As military demand declined, the RB-57F found a new role with NASA. The aircraft was ideally suited for scientific research. Its extreme altitude capability filled a critical gap. Satellites could not yet perform many required measurements. Aircraft flexibility remained essential. NASA used the RB-57F primarily for atmospheric research. The aircraft studied ozone levels and upper atmosphere chemistry. Long-duration flights allowed detailed data collection. Sensors could be adjusted between missions. This adaptability proved invaluable for scientists. Climate research became one of its primary tasks. The aircraft measured radiation, aerosols, and trace gases. These measurements supported climate modeling efforts. Data was gathered at altitudes unreachable by most aircraft. Few platforms could duplicate these conditions. The RB-57F also supported spaceflight operations. It tracked rocket launches and spacecraft reentries. Optical systems recorded high-resolution imagery. These missions required precise positioning and timing. Aircraft responsiveness was a major advantage. Only three RB-57F aircraft remain operational today. All are flown by NASA. Maintenance demands are extensive and highly specialized. Each flight requires careful preparation. Parts often must be custom fabricated. Despite their age, the aircraft remain uniquely capable. No modern aircraft fully replaces their mission profile. Drones lack payload and altitude flexibility. Satellites lack immediate responsiveness. The RB-57F still fills a niche. Modern avionics upgrades keep the aircraft viable. Structural inspections are frequent and rigorous. Safety margins are carefully managed. Experience and discipline sustain operations. Longevity reflects exceptional engineering. The RB-57F represents an extreme approach to aircraft specialization. It was designed to do one job exceptionally well. 
that job was sustained flight at extreme altitude. Few aircraft were ever built for such a narrow purpose. Even fewer succeeded. During the Cold War, its impact was largely invisible to the public. Intelligence gathered by the aircraft influenced major strategic decisions. Verification of nuclear activity depended on platforms like this. Success was measured in data, not publicity. Silence was part of its effectiveness. Transitioning from military service to NASA use extended its lifespan dramatically. Very few military aircraft achieved this. Scientific missions replaced intelligence collection. The aircraft adapted without losing relevance. Flexibility proved more valuable than speed. Only three RB-57F aircraft remain in operation today. Their continued service is highly unusual. Each flight carries both scientific and historical significance. Maintenance requires rare expertise. Retirement has been delayed repeatedly. Modern aerospace projects still face challenges the RB-57F solved decades ago. High-altitude flight remains difficult and expensive. Payload flexibility is still a limiting factor. The aircraft offers lessons in efficient design. Engineers continue to study its solutions. The RB-57F never achieved fame like faster reconnaissance aircraft. It did not rely on speed or stealth. Its strength was endurance and altitude. Those qualities defined its success. Subtle capability proved decisive. The Martin and General Dynamics RB-57F Canberra occupies a unique place in aviation history. Built in small numbers, it delivered outsized value. Its long service life reflects exceptional design choices. Few aircraft remain useful for so long. Its legacy is secure.